Welcome back people, this is Alex and let's continue the series. Next in the lineup is the GTX 295 which is another dual GPU sandwich video card. So by now guys we are seeing a pattern. I managed to get my hands on all of the top dogs of their generation. The 295 is no exception being the best that the 200 series had to offer. It came out in January the 8th 2009 and retailed for 499 US dollars. And here are the specs. Basically it was made up of two GTX 275s with a little lower clock speed to keep the TDP and thermals under control. Well at least on paper. <laughs> It has an identical design as the 9800GX2 but with a more refined outer case. As you can see it has this dotted design for extra cooling and a very nice rubberized feeling to it. On the top this is the exhaust which for me looks like the spine of a dragon. As for the power connectors we have one 6 pin and one 8 pin. Notice the single SLI connector, yep it accepts quad SLI as well. Then as for connectivity we have dual DVI ports with an HDMI and two activity LEDs for the GPUs in usage. Later on they changed the design to a standard of today which is a single PCB that houses both GPUs. This is a better layout to cool and of course to keep costs under control. Ok so with the presentation out of the way let's put the 295 to good use. Nvidia latest drivers for the 200 series are the same as before for anything older than the 400 Fermi generation. Then as for our testing platform, as you can see it is still the same as well as used before in all of our previous series videos. First up is Black Flag, with everything on max on Full HD, things are not that good as you can see, a lot of stuttering and not that fluent at all. Come on mate, we're off to a bad start. Yeah, what he said. Only in 720p things are perfect with really good numbers and very fluid gameplay. Battlefield Fall on Ultra on Full okay, HD gives us a very pleasant surprise because, I mean, it works, just look at it. Okay. Then naturally 720p will be a breeze with a clear wind and butterly smooth gameplay. Okay, get Crisis Warhead is next. <laughs> wow, I can't believe this is what I needed back then to enjoy this to the max on Full HD. I had the 8800 GT, which was a great car for 720p, but mm, oh well. Back to the story, we have another win for the 295, I mean 720p is again a clear win, as you can see it just drives through with maximum speed. For Counter Strike Global Offensive there is not much to tell, the 295 works perfectly in both resolutions. Next game please. GTA 5 does its own thing again, no SLI support, so only one GPU is working. But with a small twist, as you can see it works really well on just one chip from the 295. But oh man, look at those temps, almost 90. So shall we bet if we can get them to 100 degrees? Bioshock Infinite crashed for some reason and I couldn't make it work. Bah. So I brought Max to the table. Bullets flying everywhere with a proportional number of good frames per second as well. So we have another success under the 295's belt. Ok, two more games to go. Metro Last Light should be another win because it's such a well optimized game for multi GPU support. And it delivers just that. The numbers just speak for themselves. Lara always closes these gaming sessions and it does so in an epic way. Just look at it. What more can I say, the GTX 295 is one hell of a graphics card. So yeah guys, I mean wow, the results for the GTX 295 after today's tests are very consistent and very very good and clearly beats the former crown bearer from our previous video which was the 8800 GTX but in SLI. Besides Black Flag and the crash for Bioshock, the card worked at maximum on Full HD with everything I throw at it. Respect, that's all I can say. 
Such a shame that it lacks DirectX 11 support so we can test even more modern games and I believe it would have stood its ground admirably. This being said, can you guess what I will do in the next video? So there you have it guys, thanks for tuning in once more and until next time, no more flip sides. See you on the other side, Alex out.